pray real quick and tell them my God is real. Now look at your other neighbor and tell them. My God is real. My God is real. You know, I, uh, I'm so amazed. Uh, we got the opportunity Friday night, me and my wife got the opportunity to go with our young people as they went and ministered up at uh, Carpenter's Church uh, in Anderson, South Carolina. And, um, they were doing dramas, and um, this church was a non-denominational church. And um, I, I, I love it because most of them were Baptists that were there, Southern Baptists. And, our kids, our young people got up there and they started doing the drama and the spirit got to moving a little bit. And, and during the service you could feel like God was going to move and God was going to move. And, and, and at the altar call, God was still moving. And, and the spirit of God just came down upon some of our youth. And our, our youth um, started uh, allowing the spirit to move inside of them. And, and, and as I looked, because uh, I was wondering what everybody else's reaction was, because a lot of them had never seen um, the Spirit of God moved through them. They were looking and, and like, not looking as, what are they doing, but looking as, I want some of that. And you know, I, I got to think about it, you know, we're talking about an upgrade, and when you upgrade your life, people don't look at you like you're crazy, they look at you like, I want some of that. I want some of that. Church, I want to be able to walk out into our neighborhoods, into our streets, and when people see me, they say, I don't know what he has, but I some of that. I want some of that. You see, there's too many, too many people that are running around that are sad and depressed. And, and listen, I know what's going on in this world. There's things that keep coming at us. And Sister Nicole was telling me about um, uh, what she was talking about. The pastor at um, uh, uh, Big Creek Baptist Church passed away last night, and, and, and uh, about how he'd been there for 30 years, and, and how the people just loved him so much. And, and how they were just down and out about it. And, and, and we've been praying for them and asking God to move upon that church. But as I got to thinking about it, you know what? It, 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 yeah, it's, it, God, God is taken away and we grieve. But praise be to God, he's still in control. Amen. He's still in control. No matter what you're going through, God is still in control. Amen. Praise Jesus. That's something to get excited about. Because, listen, I, I know that even when I'm, I, I'm down and out, and listen, as your pastor, I'm not always happy. I'm not always like, yeah. Sometimes things come my way and it knocks me down. But every time it knocks me down, I realize that even though it knocked me down, God's going to grow me back to where I need to be. He's still doing something in my life because I have asked him for an upgrade. And when you ask him for an upgrade, he will provide. He will provide. As we've been in our series Upgrade, we started off with salvation, how you need to give your heart to God and allow God to upgrade you from death to life. Amen. That sounds like a pretty good upgrade. Amen. I don't know about you. I don't want to be dead. I was telling somebody the other day, dead things stink. Amen. I don't want to stink. I don't like stinking. Amen. I, I, I want to smell good, right? And dead things stink. Dead things are things that we don't want to be around. But when we think about it, being alive, amen, not just any kind of life, not just having breath, but having the breath of Jesus Christ inside of us, having a move of the Spirit of God inside of us, we're more than just alive, we're alive and He is inside of us. Then the second week we talked about sanctification. And we said there's two parts of sanctification. One is going towards Jesus continue to be just like Jesus and then mortifying the sins that keep us away from Jesus. And then the third week we talked about being baptized with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Ghost and how we need that power not just inside of us but flowing out of us and flowing around us so we can do the service that God called us to do. <clears throat> and then last week I think we're finally getting what an upgrade means because we've seen the Spirit come and be a part. And we realized last week that there's some hurdles and there's some obstacles that get in the way of the Holy Spirit. Like the hurdles or sin in our life or, or like the worldly things or even ourselves. And when we get rid of those obstacles, God will provide the upgrade. Provide the upgrade. Listen, you've got 
to get yourself out of it. Hey, Amen. I, I don't know why, but a lot of times I find me putting myself back into it. You know? I, I, I'm a worrier. Any, I don't know if any of you are like that, but I'm a worrier. I, I worry all the time. If my wife doesn't get home at 545, I start calling her. And I'm not talking about it just once. I call her four, five, six, seven times trying to figure out where she's at. I want my wife to be at home at a certain time, and it's not for any reason, but I just want to know where she's at. Amen. I know she ain't doing nothing bad. I just know if she ain't in my house at about 545, I better start worrying. And if she don't pick up the phone, you know what I start doing? I start calling the police. I start calling the fire department. I start calling the EMS. And I say, y'all better go find me. Because I'm a worrier. But you know, I come to realize, even when I put myself in it, I worry a lot more. I mess up a lot more. But when God's in it, we realize that he's in control of it. We don't have to worry no more. We don't have to have this, this sense of anxiety in us anymore or sense of fear inside of us anymore. The only fear that I have every time I come to God is that I need to be in the presence of God. And the fear I have is being outside of the presence of God. Because you see, when you're outside the presence of God, then you're free range. The great thing about it is the only person that can take you out of the presence of God is yourself. Is yourself. When you allow sin to come in, when you allow things to come in, that's when you take yourself out of the presence of God. So church, I want to let you know, it ain't about you, it's about him. It ain't about me, it's about him. It ain't about the Sunday school teacher, it ain't about the Sunday school superintendent, it ain't about the youth director, it ain't about the pastor, it ain't about the worship team, it's all about Jesus Christ. And when we realize it's all Today, Acts 2, verses 1 through 7 says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now when they heard the noise of the Lord, the multitude came together and were confound, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? Acts 2, 41-47 says, Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and in breaking of bread, and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul. And many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together, and had all things common, and sold their possessions and their goods, and parted them to all men, as every man had needed. And they continued daily with one accord in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God, and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily, such as should, should be saved. Today is just not our last week of our series upgrade, but today is a very special day. It is Pentecost Sunday. You see, Pentecost Sunday is a celebration of the receiving of the Holy Spirit by the early church. You see, yeah, we pray, we celebrate Jesus being born. Amen. On Christmas, we celebrate his death and his come back to life on Easter. But church, it's time that we celebrate when the Holy Spirit came down and formed the first church. Amen. It's time that we realize that without the Holy Ghost, church would not be church anymore. Without the Holy Spirit inside of the church, then church, guess what? We 
man that's prophesying. The first Pentecost when Jesus was baptized with the Holy Spirit. And then Jesus confirmed this prophecy with the promise of the Holy Spirit to the disciples. And after Jesus' resurrection, he told the disciples to wait in Jerusalem for the Father's gift of the Holy Spirit. From whom they would receive power to be witnesses to the ends of the earth. Praise God. I just want to let you know this. And this is not part of my sermon. But you are never alone. You're never alone. No matter how many, listen, I, one of my biggest fears is being alone and by myself. I don't know about you, that's one of my biggest fears. I, I, I pray to God, that, that pray that before me, I asked Sherry to marry me, I pray to God, please let her say yes, because if she don't, I'm going to be by myself. <laughs> I'm only now 20 something years old, and I don't want to be by myself for 150 years. I'm going to live to be about 170. So I didn't want to be by myself for that long. But you know what? That's one of my biggest fears. And another one of, my, uh, one of the things that God has showed me is, listen, even when Jesus left the earth, he sent down a comforter. He sent down the power. He sent down his spirit. He sent down something to let us realize that we don't have to go through this earth by ourselves. We don't have to go through Church, you want to know the reason why we need the Holy Spirit is because, listen, we will not make it in this day without it. Amen. Amen. Some of you, I, I just want to let you know right now, some of you that are sitting in this congregation right now are spiritual leaders in this congregation. And I want to let you know, do not quench the Spirit. If you feel God moving inside of you, please let it come outside of you. Because when you let it come outside of you, it will guide you, it will move you, but it also will touch somebody else and let them know that song says, I am not alone. Amen. I am not alone. Church, when Jesus left, he said, I'm sending something. I'm sending a power. And that, that power will help you to witness to the ends of the earth. And after Jesus ascended to heaven, the, the men returned to Jerusalem and joined together in prayer in an upper room. And on the day of Pentecost, just as promised, the sound of a violent wind filled the house. And tongues of fire came to rest on each of them. And all were filled with the Holy Ghost. And this was the beginning of the church. Amen. Amen. Listen, you know why prayer is so important? Because the church started with prayer. Amen. Amen. If you're not in constant communication with God, church, we... Amen. If you're not in that communication line, if you ain't hooked up on the right dial, then it's time to get hooked up. Because if we want the Spirit to move, then we're going to have to pray to God. Listen, I know there's troubles and I know there's trials. And, and I've been praying for a lot of people here over the last couple weeks. There's people that's been in hospitals. There's people that's had surgeries and all of this. But I think about this. It's great to pray for those and pray for those that are sick. But when we come together in the church, you know what I think we should do? The first thing we should do is pray for the presence of God. Amen. The presence of God. <laughs> we seek the kingdom first. And everything else will be handed to us. Amen. Seek God's kingdom first. You see, the, the, you see, church, we got our first upgrade. And because of this upgrade, God started something that's lasted over 2,000 years. And that is the church. But as I begin to study, I ask myself, <coughs> does the church need an upgrade now? Does the church need an upgrade now? As I asked myself that, I turned on the news. If you turn on the news lately, you've seen a lot of crazy stuff. Even in our local areas, it's not in big cities anymore. It's in the little town of Williamson and Pelzer and West Pelzer and Shedder and Belton. Listen, church. I know I keep saying this, and I'm going to keep saying this until, until I'm long gone. There is a generation that's growing up that does not know the knowledge and works of God. Amen. And you know what? I'm not blaming that generation. You know what I'm blaming? The church. Because church, we need an upgrade. We need a move of the Spirit like we've never had before. We need to ask God to come down and 
into our lives and change who we are and, and, and just fill this place up. Listen, there are people that are hurting. There are people that don't know what to do. There's people that don't know if they're going to make it to tomorrow. There's people that don't know if they're going to be able to pay the bills. There's people that are living on the side of the street. There's prostitutes. There's drug dealers. There's criminals. There's murderers. There's liars. There's gossipers. And you know what, church? Instead of us sitting on the pew, we need to be seeking first the kingdom of God. Amen. Seeking God for an upgrade like we've never seen before. This morning, I want us to look at three things that happened on that great day and show us here at Restoration Chapel why God wants an upgrade. The first thing the upgrade did for the church is it united them as a body. Acts 2 and 1 says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. The word unity is defined as the combining or joining of separate things or in entities to form one. You see, Restoration Chapel, God wants us to become one. Yes. To become one. Ephesians 4, 3 and 6 says, Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Amen. You see, church, God wants there to be only <coughs> one body. There's two things I see happening in our church. I see separation in the body of Christ because of we, this church and this church don't get along. Or this church is jealous of this church or that church is not having what that church has. And you know what's so bad? We're fighting so much we're missing the purpose of what God has called us to be. Listen, I ain't mad at Beach Springs. I ain't mad at Calvary. I ain't mad at at, 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 at a Big Creek, I ain't mad at the Church of God. I ain't mad at Church of God of Prophecy in West Belzer. You know what I say? We're all doing the same thing. We're trying to build the body of Christ. Amen. Instead of arguing with everybody else about whose church is better, we should say, listen, we'll become better when we become one, when we become connected, when we become united. And the only way we can come united is through the Holy Spirit coming down inside of us and pulling us together. The second type of separation I see is in church, in the local church. Somebody don't like what somebody wears, and somebody don't like what somebody sings, and somebody, listen church, a church divided will fall. Right. Amen. Listen, you're not going to like everything, but praise God if you just pray to God and say, God, you move, and as long as it's Jesus-centered, spirit-led, and community-minded, then God's going to make sure he's in it. Listen, church, it's time that we stop arguing and stop worried about petty little things about what color the carpet is or what the color of the pews are, what color the walls are, or what song they sung, or what Brother Bobby wore, or who's speaking or who's not speaking. And you know what we should do? We should unite together and pray, God, no matter who's up there, no matter what we have, no matter who's singing, no matter what song they sing, we pray that the presence of God move like it's never moved before. We pray for a nice dose of the Holy Ghost. We pray for salvation. We pray for sanctification. We pray that we unite together and do God's work. Amen. Church, we need to be united. We need to be united. <coughs> Shorty, Johnny, come here for a second. So this is the problem that we have. Stand right here, Johnny. <coughs> Listen, we call ourselves united. Shorty's trying to go that way and Johnny's trying to go that way. Go ahead. And I'm trying to go this way. We get nowhere. We get nowhere. But when we unite and we all come together, we make progress. We move. We move. And then listen, if one of us fall, praise be to God, there's somebody there to pick us right back up. That's right. Amen. Yeah. 
Bible actually says that something's going on with one part of the body, the other body, part of the body should, should, should be, mis be miserable. Listen, it is time that if there's somebody sick, the whole church <laughs> prays for that person that's sick. And I'm not just talking about that person that goes to that church. When another church is falling, when another church is having a rough time, it's time that we pick that church up and unite together with them and pray for a mighty move of God inside of them. I, I love it because me and Sister Sherry was talking about this morning. When we get to heaven, they're not going to say, well, all the contemporaries go over here. All the all the ones that like, like like the blue book go over here. All the ones that like the brown book go over here. All the ones that wear suits, please get on this side. And don't get near the ones that don't have suits. You know what he's going to say? He's going to say, come to me. We all come together and worship him and unite with him. Church, it's time that we get an upgrade of the Holy Ghost so we can unite together. Church, the body of Christ needs an upgrade of the Holy Spirit so we can unite together as the body. We need to upgrade not only here at Restoration Chapel, but we also need to unite with the rest of the body of Christ. Which leads us to the second event that happened during the day of Pentecost. When they had the upgrade, is they allowed the Spirit to lead them. Listen. On the day of Pentecost, it was great. It was a mighty move of God. It said 3,000 were saved. But they didn't stop there. That's right. They let the Spirit keep guiding them. Right. Listen, when you come to church on Sunday, it don't mean Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, you can live however you want to live. You must allow the Spirit to guide you during the week. Right. You must allow the Spirit to keep moving in your heart. If you look at Acts 2, and in verses 46 through 48, if I'm not mistaken, <laughs> 43 through 47, I apologize. It says that fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things common and sold their possessions and their goods and parted them to all men as every man had needed. And they continued daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house. They did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of the heart, praising God and having favor with all, with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Amen. Listen, it wasn't a one-time movement. It was a spirit that moved. You see, when they got baptized with the Holy Ghost, you know what they realized to do? They allowed to, allowed to realize to let the spirit guide them daily. Church, it is time that we allow the Spirit to die, guide us daily. It is time that we wake up every morning and we pray for salvation, we pray for sanctification, and we pray for a baptism of the Holy Ghost. And you see, this Pentecostal outpour was more than a mere flashing forth of divine energy. Sudden, suddenly released and immediately withdrawn. It was the communication of the divine power which remained in the church and resulted in a lasting spiritual zeal. You see, church, when you're guided by the Spirit, you have an excitement inside of you. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm getting excited. <laughs> now, 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 say it like you mean it. <laughs> When the Spirit guides you, amen, you're excited about what the Spirit's about to do. Amen. I, I'm not a roller coaster guy. If you are, you just probably go to heaven and see Jesus before I do. That's all right. <laughs> but I'll never forget, one time I was at an all big and bad. All my friends were riding a roller coaster. I said, I guess I got to ride. The fear was inside of me so much. But I didn't want to cry because I knew I'd be made fun of. I, I, I tried to procrastinate as long as I could, but I couldn't do it. And so when I got into the line, they were all excited. We're going to ride this ride. They say we go this fast, and we go this many circles, and we go upside down, and we go around. As their excitement grew, my fear grew. Because I knew that 
excitement as we got closer and closer got catching up on me a little bit. And now we go, yeah, that sounds fun, but... <laughs> By the time we got onto the car, I was tearing up. My knees were shaking. I almost jumped off and said, I got to go to the bathroom. <laughs> as we got on there, they all lifted up their hands in excitement. And they were all screaming and yelling. And I had my eyes closed. <laughs> my hands together. And sitting there. And their excitement kept going and going. And we weren't even moving anywhere. And they were just excited about it. And as I listened to everybody else getting excited about it, guess what I started doing? My hands came a little unloose. My, my head came up a little bit. My eyes came open because I wanted to see what they were doing. I wanted to see what was going on. I said, something's got to be good because everybody else was having a good time. As the thing started, they got louder and louder, and I started yelling. <laughs> I don't know if it was help or yay. <laughs> But their excitement got a hold of me, and when their excitement got a hold of me, I was actually excited about what I was doing. Church, what I'm trying to say is, a church that is excited goes out, and other people get excited. Yeah. A body that's excited about God, guess what happens? Other people get excited about God. Church, it's time that we stop being a group of Christians that sit here like this, and looking at for God to come back. And it's time that we start walking in the Spirit, start moving in the Spirit, and say, God is going to do something great today. No matter what comes my way, He's going to be with me, He's going to move with me, and praise me, God, He's in control. You see, the only way you can do that is when you're filled with the Holy Ghost, when you're filled with the Spirit of God. And when you get that kind of excitement, it gets somebody else excited. It gets some, listen, as I said earlier, I want people to look at me and say, what's wrong with Him? I want
You got us doing this party in the park thing. We're doing the spring water festival. We did the Easter egg hunt. We, we go door to door and we knock on people's door. And we hand out flyers and we have vacation Bible school where we go out to the community and we do this and we do that. But church, the reason why God has put that on my heart is because this community needs Jesus Christ. Amen. And even if it's at a party in the park where there's no Christian influence, we're going to praise God anyway. We're going to praise Him no matter what. We're going to show people what Jesus is doing in our lives. Not for the growth of Restoration Chapel, but for the growth of the body of Christ. Yeah, you need to be minded, church. we got to realize that. And when we become spirit led, when we become Jesus centered, when we become community minded, it says, and the church added daily. Every month I have to fill out a report and send it to the state offices. And one of the questions on it is how many people were saved? As some of you pastors know, Sometimes you put one, sometimes you put two. And this is in a month's time. Three, four, five. If you have your Bible, maybe ten. But you know what? If they were important, they had them daily. Listen, church. The only reason why they had them daily is because they went out to the community and they preached the gospel. Yes. They didn't condemn. Mm. They didn't throw people under the bus. They didn't care what they looked like. They didn't care what they did. They didn't care. Listen, they were going to praise Jesus Christ no matter what. They were going to tell people what God had done in their life no matter what. Church, we started off this year with a series that said we are the church. That means you don't have to be in a four wall at Restoration Chapel to preach and praise God. That means you go outside of these four walls and you let people know who Jesus is. You see, what amazes me is they had this boldness in them that none of us seem to have. But it came from the Spirit of God. They stood up and preached things that were simple and easy. You know what they stood up and preached? Repentance. All they said, listen, they didn't preach this great gospel. They didn't even have a series. They didn't have an upgrade series. If I was with Peter, I said, Peter, let's do a series. He said, no, because you know what the series is? Repent Amen, and turn from your wicked ways. Amen. Repent and turn. Listen, every nothing else matters. The only thing that matters right now is you ask God into your heart. That you ask God. Listen, after you do that, we'll talk about sanctification. We'll talk about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. But until then, we're going to let people know that Jesus can come into your heart. He can save you. He can bring you into the family of God. Church, as Christians, as disciples,
All it takes is one. Sure, it comes to the piano. Listen. About 12 years ago, 10 to 12 years ago, it took one man to change my life. Listen, I know people have been praying for me, and I knew people had wanted me to see what God can do inside of me. But it took one man preaching the gospel and taking the time to come to me and say, Bobby, I, I, he was, as he was preaching, as, it, as I told this story many, many times from the pulpit, as, I was, as he was preaching, I grabbed his pants leg. And a lot of ministers, a lot of people would say, just wait till I'm done. Just wait till I'm done. But he stopped dead in the middle of his service, and he looked at me, and he said, Bobby, what is it? And I said, I want to be saved. And he began praying with me, and my life was changed forever. One little fire. Listen, church. I told some of you Wednesday night, we were talking about the tongue and how the tongue is something that's very destructive, but also can be very positive. I, I told them Wednesday night, and I'll tell you the same thing. One of my favorite movies of all time is Bio if you haven't seen it, don't worry about it. It's just a dumb movie. And you will get no positive influence out of it at all. But I remember watching it. And they were talking about these, they were confessing these things that they had done. And they were talking about this squirrel. How it ran into a house and somehow gasoline fell on it. And when gasoline fell on it, it set the squirrel on fire. And the squirrel, as it caught on fire, kept running. And as it kept running, it caught the house on fire. And the house caught another house on fire. And that house caught another house on fire. And by the time it was done, it burnt down a whole city. All because of a small little squirrel. Church, because of one person allowing the Holy Ghost to move in their life and set a church on fire. By one part of the body allowing God to move upon it. generation on fire for God can have a move like we've never seen before. But church first, we got to get to the upgrade part. First, you got to ask God into your heart. Second, you got to ask God to sanctify you. Third, you got to ask God to baptize you in the Holy Ghost. And then fourth, you got to ask God to just move outside of you and let you do what God has called you.